Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. Well, when the story of Fast and Furious began to come out in the last few months, it was really no surprise to us. We've known that the ATF has been involved in smuggling guns in Latin American countries for decades, even going back to Iran-Contra. But the fact that they were involved with the Sinaloa drug cartel shipping in cocaine, according to federal documents that we're going to cover here in a few minutes, even blew me away that this agency is so incredibly criminal. We know they love to barbecue men, women, and children at Waco, but the fact that they would try to destabilize all of Mexico just as a pretext to blame the Second Amendment is incredible. And now the head of the ATF has resigned. Their whole house of cards is coming down. It's now been confirmed that the White House was in control of this operation with as many as seven different federal agencies. This is a false flag operation run against the Second Amendment. And the cover-up all began, just like with Nixon and Watergate, with a Border Patrol agent that was killed by guns shipped in to Mexico by the ATF. With more on this incredible scandal that threatens to bring down the Obama crime operation is Larry Pratt, the executive director of Gun Owners of America, the only no-compromise pro-Second Amendment organization here in the United States. Larry Pratt, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to be with you, and I agree with your assessment. Uh, it made the scandal, the crime spree that the government has been on, it could possibly bring the president down before the next election. But my guess is that there is just so much investigating that's being done that Congressman Issa, who's the point of the spear on this, is not going to have things in a position uh, for that. But I do believe it will affect the election and it will almost certainly guarantee that the president be a one term president. He has refused to fire the people responsible for running guns into Mexico, some 2000 guns resulting being used in crimes that have taken the lives of about 200 people. Only 600 of the guns have been recovered. So there's a lot more crime coming down the road. And this, uh, I think once the Republican nominee gets a hold of this, if they don't do it beforehand, it's going to be lethal. Uh, because Obama and, and Holder, the attorney general, both refused to fire some of the people that have been involved in this. Uh, one man, the head of the ATF, they just moved him over to a nice cushy job in the Department of Justice to get him out of the limelight, they were hoping. Uh, what it did, though, was actually, uh, I think, make this case go beyond the breaking point. I think now the even the Democrat media is going to be dealing with it uh, reluctantly, as little as possible, but nevertheless, NBC finally two days ago had an account of how the government was running the guns into Mexico. ABC still MIA, but CBS has been doing a very decent job, uh, although they've kind of put the kibosh on the TV time of their investigative reporter, but she's still on their website. And Fox has been doing this almost daily. Uh, William Lajeunesse has been in Arizona this week going down to Mexico with his camera. Uh, it's hardly a vacation and they're going to keep the reporting coming, I'm very sure. So uh, we, we now have email that explain they weren't doing this for any law enforcement purpose. Not that you could say running guns, losing the chain of custody of evidence uh, and and say that that's an investigation. Oh, sure. Um, and besides, our guys can't go into Mexico. They can't go in armed. Even if they have papers to go, they're going to go the way you and I would have to go, which is unarmed. Uh, not a good way to do an investigation of a drug cartel, I would think. And then the... Uh, the email showed what they really were up to. They really were up to changing the dial on the gun control debate. They wanted to do something to substantiate what's actually a lie, that 90% of the guns used in crime in Mexico come from the United States. Well, among the guns that could be traced, that the Mexicans thought could be traced, 
gun related crimes that would occur down in Mexico. Uh, some of their documents show they were actually pr pleased at the increase in violent crime in Mexico following the beginning of this program in October of uh, 2009. Now, Larry, Larry, looking at this, clearly we now have a, multiple people at the White House that's now come out who were aware of what was going on. We have guns being shipped out of Tampa, down uh, into Honduras. Um, we have the El Paso Times reporting on the Sinaloa gang allowed to ship in thousands of kilos of cocaine by the U.S. government. Uh, what's really going on here uh, at the end of the day? I mean, this is massive. This makes Watergate uh, look like uh, something a choir boy would do in comparison. I mean, will this bring down Obama? Well, Richard Nixon uh, got into a cover-up, and that's what got him in trouble. And he wasn't trying to cover up some 200 bodies. But that's exactly what Obama did, certainly this week, when Melson was allowed to move laterally from the ATF to the Justice Department, and Obama and Holder obviously signed off on that. I mean, that's a big deal when the head of one of your agencies is being transferred to another agency. And I think he's he's inescapably got ownership now, and ISA is certainly going to use that point. And he will articulate it, and hopefully other Republicans will learn from him how to sing this song, because if enough of them start to talk about it, and make it as it should be, as big an issue as the jobs killing that Obama's been doing. He's killing two things, jobs and Mexicans. <laughs> and uh, that ought to be the focus of what the opposition party is talking about. Both are true, both are accurate, both, you know, nobody hardly yet has seen the Fast and Furious as a, as a big issue because the Democrat media has been covering rather well. But I think that is beginning to change. Uh, that's what we've seen. Even the number of interviews that we've been doing here has gone up sharply this week following what happened with Melson. So it seems to me that the word is finally out that, oh, the government was on a crime spree. Uh, what is going on here? And um, I think now the, uh, the big networks and some of the big papers are, they're gonna either have to, to get into this are they going to continue to lose circulation and coverage? Now, Larry, in closing, uh, they've been caught perjuring themselves. The head of the ATF has had to step down. It's come out that a whole bunch of federal agencies were involved and that this was directed uh, by the White House. Uh, so where does this go? A, where do you see this investigation going? But B, from your own analysis, what was really going on here? Because you've got the drug dealing, all of it. Well, some of the um, email now, I think, are going to put Mr. Newell, Mr. Newell in jail for perjury. I mean, I think it's a clear-cut case because his denials under oath about w deliberately walking guns into Mexico are now blown out of the water because Newell, back in 10, back in the middle of this whole mess, was pleading with three guys on the National Security Council in the White House to, hey, can't you convince the Mexicans to cooperate with us so we can try to keep track of the guns when they go south of the border? So there's the admission that he had lied under oath. <laughs> they were letting the guns go south of the border. And the... Um, what now? I'm sorry. What was the other question? Well, no, I mean, I understand that it's a way to blame the Second Amendment domestically, but why ship the guns into Mexico? What's the motive there to destabilize it? Blame the problems on Mexico again on the Second Amendment? I mean, I guess that's my own. I mean, I've answered my own question. Uh, any final views on that? Then I've got one more question for you, Larry Pratt. They wanted to hammer gun owners and gun ownership. They, uh, in fact, one of the email was talking about, did any of our guns turn up in Fast and Furious? We want to have a demand letter uh, go out to the southwestern state gun stores. And sure enough, they did it even after they got caught. Well, we need more gun control of the, civ uh, of the civilians in this country. And so that was what they were up to, clear as day, this whole 
episode, part of the phony number of how many guns we sent down to Mexico from gun stores and gun owners. It's all concocted. We're talking about 15% uh, at most. And so they would have had to send a lot more guns down to really change the numbers. And perhaps if nobody had blown the whistle, that's exactly what they would have done. The, the only good thing about a U.S. law enforcement agent getting killed and the guns traced back to Fast and Furious is that that's when the whistleblower said, that's it. We told them that would happen, and now we're going public. Well, there's no doubt that if the Republican Party has the will, they can bring Obama down like Nixon. The only question is, um, do they want to go along with business as usual? and uh, allow the president to engage in these type of activities. Now, in closing, uh, briefly, Larry, uh, of GunOwners.org, I want to get into some articles that I have out of the Orleans County record in Massachusetts. Uh, I've got them out of Indiana. I've got them out of Arizona. I've got them all over the country where they're raiding gun dealers, confiscating all their guns, and not even charging them where gunsmiths at their houses are being raided, people buying 500 rounds of ammo are being raided, uh, they're going and questioning people that buy rifles. So while the government has been caught shipping guns all over Latin America and, sh and allowing drug cartels to ship narcotics in, uh, according to federal documents that have been filed in court, they're, they're really going in an extrajudicial way after... Uh, after gun dealers and others. Uh, what's going on here? The, one of the uh, whistleblowers pointed out that they were trying to change the narrative by having some big juicy case that they could show to the American people why more gun control was needed. And that was this suggestion. It, it came via a whistleblower, I should say, but it was an attempt to change the perception as soon as Cheryl Atkinson had aired her first story about uh, John Dodson, one of the, the first whistleblower to go public. And they were hoping they could have a media campaign of their own to, to uh, make themselves look good again. And so I think that's what all of this harassment is. Plus, let's face it, we've never had somebody as anti-gun as Eric Holder and Barack Obama in these two top positions. And so partly out of ideological drive, uh, they're doing this because this is really the only avenue available to them is administratively using their executive powers. Uh, the Congress isn't going along with this. And by the way, one of the things we're going to be uh, uh, telling the Congress in, in the course of things when we can schedule it in uh, the email that we send out to our members asking them to get in touch with their congressman is if you vote to refund Obamacare in the next continuing resolution, which comes up for a vote at the end of September or before that, but they have to have a new budget October 1st. If you vote to re to continue funding that, continue funding the program that blocked the reimportation of rifles and some shotguns uh, by uh, the federal uh, boys at the State Department, in this case, and BATF. If you uh, vote to um, uh, do it a, a number of other things and do not defund those functions the administrative harassment that is being conducted right now by this anti-gun administration then you will have we won't believe when you tell us that you're against Obamacare that you're against the the banning of the reimportation of these firearms and all those kinds of things we'll tell you that that's a lie and that that's the message that we're going to be sending to the to the um, Congress all right, Larry Pratt, thank you so much for being out there and putting out your legislative alerts. People can sign up at gunowners.org for those free alerts, or they can sign up and become a paying member because you are the only no-compromise Second Amendment organization out there, and there's no doubt if you hadn't been there over the last few decades, we wouldn't have a Second Amendment today. Larry Pratt, Gunners of America, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back, my friends. We'll look at Ron Paul 2012 and how can we take this country back.